Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. John Cole and I get to speak with Manny Pacheco, and we're in award season. Hi, Manny. I love award season. How you doing, Art? How you doing, John? I uh, love good. Awards. Good, Manny. Favorite time yeah. of the year. <laughs> Manny, I, I, I think we all love award season, and unfortunately, there's so many of them, but you are a member of SAG and AFTRA, right. and you get to vote on these, and they not too long ago, they announced the nominees. Do you mm. have, and of course, the awards is going to come up pretty soon, I think. Do right. you have any um, any favorites among the nominees? Well, can I start by first saying that I think that this year is a really down year. It, when I place my top 10 on my blog, I would tell you that probably eight of those wouldn't make my top 10 in any other year. Really? Yeah, I really think it's a down year. It's not, it's not a bad year, but a lot of films that I consider B to B minus are all, all in consideration because it's just a weak year. The only year that comes to mind that's this close is the year after The Marvelous 1962, which is 1963, where Tom Jones was the best picture of the year, and I don't think it would have been nominated in 62. So yeah. Yeah, I think it's a really down year for films. Um, now, I'm, do you think, yeah, you not, think that's because uh, basically COVID got in the way of making films? Could be, could be part of it. I think that, that that has something to do with it. It's just one of those years where the entries don't inspire me. They don't entertain me the way normal. I, I don't get into that journey or that fantasy of whatever that celluloid brings. But that said, there are some uh, wonderful treats for films. Uh, before films you talk about, Manny, before you talk about them, though, that I have another theory, which is that um, uh, even though I, I believe that uh, movie viewing has changed for good, I'm not saying the better or the worse, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that people aren't showing up to theaters. And you're not getting that collective experience and buzz. Uh, yeah, although like, although you're, you seem to be indicating that you think that the overall quality is, is overall just not up to par. Down, but I will tell you, to that point, Art, they weren't going to the movie theaters before COVID for, for the awards. Mm -hmm. I mean, Moonlight didn't get a lot of attention. Green Book got mild attention. No, I'm not buying that. I think that people have been not been going to the movies except for the big action films for years. I mean, obviously Top Gun, Maverick, uh, which got a stunts nomination, yeah. Avatar, which also got a stunts nomination. Those big, big movies, people are going to, I mean, those are the big, big movies. Of course, uh, uh, the, the, the Black Panther as well. So, I mean, it, you know, it's, that's just the way it is with, oh, you know. Okay, the, okay. The, I, I, the, student, the student will now go back to his little, Hovel and study some more <laughs> and uh, tell us who's who, who are your favorites for SAG? Well, let's look at the um, the male actors. I've got my list right here. I just want to make sure you know. And um, I, if you looked at the Golden Globes, the winners in the dramatic category, uh, Austin Buster, uh, Butler for Elvis and uh, Colin Farrell for the Banshees of Inna yeah. I, I haven't seen the Elvis performance. I've heard some uh, mixed reviews on that. Uh, I did see The Banshees of Inna Sharon. Uh, Colin Farrell was magnificent. But for me, my choice from the list uh, that includes Adam Sandler and Bill Nighy uh, is, is Brendan Fraser in his turn for The Whale, where he put on a lot of weight, a lot of prosthetics to portray a heartbreaking performance. I thought he was magnificent. I think he did a great job. And if you're looking for snubs in that category, Tom Hanks, uh, for the the uh, the movie about Otto, <laughs> and uh, of course Tom Cruise uh, for Top Gun. So I mean th there are some snubs, but I think for my money Brendan Fraser is the clear cut winner. That said, I believe that either Colin Farrell or Austin uh, Butler will take home the award. Now that's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, why would they win over your choice? Well, I I hope they don't. I mean I I, I like. I, I like the performance of Colin Farrell. It wouldn't really upset me if he won. And he did win the comedy portion of the Golden Globes. Um, so that puts him, he becomes one of the front runners. And the winner of the dramatic side was, of course, Austin Butler for Elvis. And there's a lot of buzz right now for Elvis among the uh, SAG members. So it's a popular yeah. movie, did well. And uh, even though the movie might have gotten mixed reviews, his performance has gotten really good reviews. Hmm. Yeah, you bring up, bring up a good point, Manny, and that is a lot of people 
have trouble separating the actor's performance from whether they liked the film or not, right. whether there was a good film. And, and for the you, Oscars. of course, as a professional, can separate a yes. good performance from a bad film. But but you know, in the Oscars case, that's kind of a, that's that's the appropriate question. But for SAG, we're not looking at the film. We're actually looking for the actor. We're we're a branch of the actors. Uh, category. So we're not right. actually looking at the film at all. We're only looking at the performance. So well, anybody who votes feels that way. Yeah, it's, it's easy to say, hard to do, right? <laughs> right. It is hard to do. But yeah. for many years, I've been voting for actors in movies I haven't liked. Sure. So, I mean, I'm, I'm used to that. I, I'm willing to do that. Yeah. So, so that's your, that's your favorite Boston actor. Performance and we'll see. Yeah. Uh, now, first, favorite actor. What's the next category? Uh, female. Female actor in a leading role. And okay. I think the hands-on favorite to win her third Oscar, and of course I think she'll win the uh, the SAG as well, Kate Blanchett for Tar. Oh. Uh, I went to a screening. I got to actually meet Kate Blanchett. She's a delight. It's kind of odd to hear her Aussie voice when you see her in a bunch of films where she plays Americans. Yeah. But she was just, she tore up the scenery. It, it, she had to learn German. She had to learn to play the piano. She had a lot of dialogue, and she masterfully handled it, artfully handled it. And I think she's an absolute odds-on favorite. I mean, she's up against Viola, Viola Davis and The Woman King. Great performance. Yep. Anna de Armas, another one of those films where you don't like the film, but her performance was stunning as Marilyn Monroe. Yes, I uh, thought she was wonderful. My, my second favorite choice, uh, Danielle Deadweiler in Till. And of course, everybody loves Michelle Yeoh's performance in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Now, the snub. Here's the snub. Okay. Michelle Williams for The Fablemans. Boy, that's of the course. biggest snub of all the categories. Sure, that was a powerful performance. Yeah, I, I yeah. agree. She was outstanding. And and you know, I'm a big fan of Michelle Williams. On top of that, so that was a big, big snub. Yeah. Hmm. You know, Kate I am. Chet, I yeah. am kind of surprised that Michelle Yeoh got that nomination. I, I'm a big fan of hers, and mm. I thought um, that particular movie was wonderful. It was, I don't know if it's the first time, but it's I, it was the first time I can remember her doing a really a, a role that was comprehensive, real person. Yes. It's as a opposed film, to, though. you know, sword and sandals and flying through the air and slicing people's heads off and stuff like that. She's a wonderful actress, but this really was a tour de force. And she did win the Golden Globe in the comedy category. So she she would be a favorite, but I don't think she can beat Kate Blanchett. I think this is like Frances McNorman when, when she was up in Nomadland. It, it was just a foregone conclusion. I think this is the odds on favorite choice right here. Mm -hmm. so. Politics? No. It's a great performance. It's absolutely magnificent. I loved I loved her performance. I actually loved the film as well. So yeah. So there you go. Um, outstanding performance in a supporting role. Uh, the the two actors of uh, the supporting roles from the Banshees of Inisherin, uh, Brendan Gleeson, Barry Keegan, wonderful. Paul mm -hmm. Dano playing the father of uh, Steven Spielberg and the Fablemans, really good performance, yes. real yes. solid. Ki Young Kwan. Really great performance in everything, everywhere, all at once, and he won the uh, he actually won the um, the Golden Globe, and Eddie Red Redmayne, who's always good, and he's really good in The Good Nurse. So, I like Brendan Gleeson. The favorite is Ki Young Kwan. Mm. Yeah, and as far as snubs go, Judd Hirsch, The Fablemans. I would have picked him over Paul Dano personally. Wow. Less really, yeah. Support well, support. he did a great job. No, yeah, real couple of scenes. That's all. But he was, he was fabulous. He was fabulous. Yeah. So that's a, that's a snub for me, uh, absolutely. Um, outstanding performance for female actor in a supporting role. Right now, um, the favorite is Angela Bassett for Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. She won the award, the Golden Globe. Yeah, I loved Hong Chao in The Whale. I thought that was really a terrific performance. It's called, everybody's calling this a surprise nomination. I thought she well-deserved nomination. My choice actually to win, but I don't think she will. Uh, also Carrie Condon, who also was superb in the Banshees of Inisherin. She would be my close second choice. I loved her. And then of course, Jamie Lee Curtis and Stephanie Zhu in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Th th that would be my favorite. When I saw mm -hmm. Jamie Lee Curtis, <laughs> I, I, I had to, Tell my wife, to get, guess who that is? 
Yeah. <laughs> and you know, who doesn't love Jamie Lee Curtis? I yeah. love Jamie Lee. Yeah. I, I have a story where she accidentally called my house once, believe it or not. It, it, it's a story for another day. But yes, <laughs> I actually had a phone call from Jamie Lee Curtis. She had an inquiry about something that happened in my, my home, believe it or not. And we yeah. had a very delightful conversation 20, 30 odd years ago. <laughs> <laughs> name so that's dropper. Your name dropper. Yeah. Yeah, I am a name dropper. Now, outstanding performance by a cast. Here's where I think Glass Onion might have done well. You know, the Knives Out sequel got snubbed. Uh, Top Gun got snubbed. I thought that was a great cast in, in Top Gun. Yeah. But the nominations, Babylon, I didn't like the film at all. At all. But it, it is a strong cast. I will give it that. Maybe deserve it of a nomination. I don't see it being nominated for Best Picture for the Oscars. Uh, the Banshees of Inishirin, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, and Women Talking, which is the uh, the, the movie about the Mennonites uh, with yeah. Francis McDormand and Claire Foy, Rooney Mara. I think the favorite is The Fablemans uh, because they won the Golden Globe and it was a very popular choice. I, I like... My my choice is the Banshees of Inna Sharon. Um, everything, everywhere, all at once might be the sleeper. Could win. I think could win. Um, there was a lot of great films that I would have loved to have seen on this list. She said was absolutely fabulous. That's the the uh, investigative story about uh, Harvey Weinstein. Didn't, yeah. didn't even make the cut anywhere in, in this group. So, I mean... I, also, Empire of Light, the Olivia Coleman film was absolutely magnificent, got snubbed. So, I mean, I, I'm going to pick The Banshees of Inisherin, but I think The Fablemans is going to take it. As far as The Fablemans go, I'm in the camp that wanted to see something, I think, big. You know, even like E.T. big or yeah. Jaws big or, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark big. What we got instead was a very intimate portrait yep. that was well done. Yes. Um. I did. I don't know. It just. I didn't. I didn't find it to be great. I, I. You know, Manny. It's funny you should describe it that way because I likened it to a European director's film. Yeah. It. It had that certain down uh, simplicity, but a, a, a very level mm -hmm. story. It wasn't too exciting. It wasn't too down. It was just. You know, it was a very personal. Yeah. And uh, almost like a European director would do. You know, if you put it that way, I mean, that makes a little bit more sense. And I think if people vote that way, it probably is going to win going away. I um, I just wanted to see more for some reason. I got it from Michelle Williams. I thought she was just absolutely mm -hmm. magnificent. I mean, yeah. she really is the movie, if you think about it. Um, that's the showy performance, obviously. The the quieter performance, Paul Dano, really is great as the father. I, I, think, I think the sum of its parts just don't equal to the whole. That's my problem with the film. The yeah. individual roles were kind of fun. The way it ended, where, you know, where he actually meets John Ford was kind of interesting. I thought that yeah. was fun. But if you put the movie together as a whole, the beach scene is also really fun. You know, the problems that he has with the uh, with the other students and bullying. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to like about this film. I just, uh, I don't know. I I don't know. I didn't, I, 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 when it comes to putting my pen to paper and voting, I'm having a little trouble with that. So. Yeah, I know what you mean because it, it the that whole teenage angst thing, uh, and the fable events, it didn't even rise to the occasion of uh, uh, Molly Ringwald in. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, it could have it could have even been one of those kind it of. It wasn't films. a brat pack and it was, uh, level. It was very flat. Dramatic. Yeah, it was a little bit of drama. You felt a little bit of tension, but you know he's going to become a superstar, so I, you, you know everything's going to end up okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't know why he didn't call it the Spielbergs. I mean, I don't understand the title change as well. If it's autobiographical, why not? Well, I think, I think the, the reason uh, I saw some interviews with him, um, yeah. I, I think uh, if, if not on Chris Wallace talks to various people. It was some other thing where it, it was indicated that the, the it was semi-autobiographical, but he didn't rag as much on his father as he might otherwise have wanted to mm -hmm. or as it would have been called for. So he made some changes in the way he perceived the characters in the uh, movie as opposed to 
what he really thought of them in, in real life. And that well, was that's fine. But at the very end, he meets John Ford. Why don't you change his name to Joe Chevy? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what so, I'm saying? So, so I think that it's, it's fair to say, though, that your opinions are well thought out and you go on the record. This isn't just like we're going to be having this close to SAG and you already found something out, but you put them on your website. Would you remind people where they can go to take a look at all of your yes. uh, 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 choices here before annually, they're, they're, they're real? Annually, I put I put my, my choices on my website and my top 10 list of favorite movies. And my top 10 list never, ever coincides with who's going to win the uh, the award because many times my favorites aren't even nominated. So I have to pick from the bunch that they nominated. So I have to sure. select my And for the three oh, people oh, who oh. have not been in uh, in uh, the the uh, internet world in the last 30 years, what is the name of that website? ForgottenHollywood.com. <laughs> there you thank go. you, thank you, thank you. Good. Well, well Manny, thanks for sharing uh, your opinions. That's right, just opinions. Um, because they're valued. They're mm -hmm. valuable opinions. Thank you. Yeah, and, and we always have this conversation, and we always end the same way. You know, uh, John, member of the Directors Guild, would never give up his, his uh, choices. He would never tell us who he votes for. And there is a certain uh, quality of charm in keeping secret your votes. I get yep. that. I respect that. I happen to, to lean the other way, and, and that's okay. I think that there's room for, for both sides of the aisle where people want to be secretive or they want to be open about it. And uh, we, we can leave it right there, right? Yeah, we can. Believe Thank it. you, Manny. Although, although I want to leave you with one thought. Uh, okay. And it's got nothing to do with directing or acting. It is about editing. The first three minutes of Top Gun, of the new Top Gun Maverick film, is the finest editing in 50 years. Wow. Mm. Three-minute montage. Be better than the opening of... Um, of Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> exactly. Art and I were right on the same page with that one. Better than that opening? Really? That I was the so. editing right there, too. I mean, that it's was... the fun. editing. We're talking about editing. Yeah, no, I editing of Saving Private Ryan was amazing at that opening of the D-Day invasion. That mm. was pretty remarkable. It was... That D-Day invasion, I would give a directing award, not an editing award. Oh. That's the difference. Okay, there's our expert right there. I'm going to have to, you know, bow to you on that one. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens when the Oscars come out. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks again, guys. Manny. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.